We're going to continue with the back page of the 3134 concept review worksheet. So this is the back page uh, starting with uh, the first derivative test. Uh, so the point of first derivative test is to determine when the graph um, or the intervals where the graph is rising, intervals where the graph is falling, and also to identify uh, peaks and valleys of the graph, the highest points or lowest points on the graph. Um, so the first thing we do is we set, uh, we find, we have to find critical points. Um, so we're going to take f prime, find the derivative, and set that equal to zero. Now when we find f prime is set equal to zero, we need to make sure that we set, if there is a numerator and denominator portion of the derivative, we need to set both the numerator um, and the denominator equal to zero separately. We need to find critical points from both numerator and denominator. After that, uh, we're going to put all the critical points on the same uh, sign number line. Uh, so for instance, if the number line um, has, uh, if the critical points are A, B, and C, then I'm going to put those X values, A, B, and C, on the number line. And then next, I'm um, going to choose values in each interval to put into F prime. So I'm going to choose a value in this interval, choose a value in this interval, choose a value in this interval, okay. Um, uh, however many intervals I need to uh, involve. And then we're going to use a test point uh, within, um, uh, between these intervals here, uh, plug into F prime and um, determine uh, whether those intervals will have um, rising slope or rising graph or, or a falling uh, portion of the graph. So uh, let's say um, the number um, negative 3 falls into this interval, um, then I can plug negative 3 into f prime and um, if the result I get is a positive value then I know that in this interval um, from negative infinity to the x value of a that the graph will be rising. Okay, And the negative, uh, let's say uh, for instance if I plug in 0 into the derivative and I get a negative value then I know that um, throughout this entire interval the graph is going to be falling and then um, Again, choose a value between b and c to plug into f prime. Choose a value to the right of c, plug into f prime, and then uh, we can begin to get an idea as to the behavior of the graph in terms of its slope. So, um, what we can say is now that based off of this number line, sine line, um, uh, something else that I like to do is I like to draw arrows uh, to indicate uh, the direction of these uh, potential. Um, intervals here. So positive means positive slope. So I just draw an arrow pointing to the upper right to because we always view the graph from left to right. So um, this indicates the graph is rising and then negative um, a slope pointing down will be indicating where the slope is um, falling. So we can say f of x is increasing on the interval from a to b because f prime is greater than zero um, or f of x is decreasing on the interval because f prime is less than zero. Um, so in this case, uh, increasing interval would be from negative infinity to A and then from B to C. Okay. Um, um, interval of decreasing in this case will be from A to B and then from C to infinity. Uh, we can also look at these arrows to indicate where the relative max relative min are. So in this case, the graph is rising to the left of A and then it's going to fall to the right of A. So that indicates that at point A, there must be a relative max. So relative max at A, and if I want to find the Y value, I can plug um, this uh, value into the original function to find the Y value. And then we also have to include because statements, because F prime, or the slope, changes from negative to positive. Uh, sorry, from positive to negative, from positive slope to negative slope. Uh, relative min, so in this case, point B is relative min because the slope changes from negative to positive. And um, if we were asked to justify with because statements, we would have to write as because f prime changes from negative to positive. All right, concavity test um, determines uh, intervals where the graph is concave up or concave down um, and also helps to determine where the points of inflection is. So uh, a lot of this uh, is dealing with the second derivative. So uh, if we want to find critical points, we can find the second derivative function and then set that equal to zero. Remember, critical points, again, can come from numerator and or the denominator of the f double prime function. So if there is um, um, uh, 
if there is an expression in the numerator, well, we need to set that equal to zero. If there's an expression in the denominator, we need to set that equal to zero, and then identify the critical points separately. After we find all the critical points, we put them onto a sign number line. And um, now we're going to choose values in this interval to plug into the f double prime to determine f double prime function to determine um, the concavity. So in this case, let's say the critical points from second derivative ends up being a and b. And I can choose a value to the left of a and then plug into the second derivative. And if I get a positive value, that indicates that the graph is concave up. Um, concave up just means that the graph is becoming more positive. The slope is, is moving in the positive direction from left to right, becoming more positive. Um, and then um, let's say here I choose a value between a and b to plug into the second derivative. If I get a negative value, that indicates that um, the graph is part of a con concave down portion of the graph, meaning that the slope is moving, becoming more negative. Okay. Uh, sometimes you may be asked to justify your statement. So um, we can say that the graph is concave up where there's positive intervals here um, from... Um, in this case, negative infinity to a, and then from b to infinity, because f double prime is greater than zero. Concave down from a to b, because f double prime is negative, so f double prime is less than zero. Points of inflection is where um, uh, the slope changes from concave up to concave down, or from concave down to concave up, vice versa. As long as there's a change in signs of the second derivative, um, then that's a point of inflection. So a point of inflection is where f double prime changes signs. So in this case, if I have a graph that looks like this, potential point of inflection would be somewhere here where uh, the graph is transitioning from concave down to concave up. Or uh, if the graph looks starts off um, in concave up, turns concave down, then that transition point here will be the POI. All right, one more concept here is the second derivative test. Uh, we got to be careful with uh, this name, second derivative test. Second derivative test um, is a test for relative max and relative min. It is not a test for POI. For POI, I call it the concavity test. Um, both involve the second derivative function, but this specific name, second derivative test, is referring to a second option of um, finding relative max and relative min. So basically, the second derivative test essentially gives us the same um, result as the first derivative test. It allows us to identify relative max and relative min, but just using a different method. So we have to be clear about the distinction there. Okay, the second derivative test achieves the same as the first derivative test. Again, it does not test for point of inflection, does not do the same thing as con the concavity test. Okay, so to, to find uh, relative max and relative min using the second derivative function, we first need to identify critical points from f prime, okay, not from f double prime. So that's where the, the distinction is uh, different. Um, for a concavity test, we set the second derivative equal to zero. For the second derivative test, we start off by finding f prime's derivative. We don't find critical points from f double prime. Okay, so the critical points from f prime, we set f prime equal to zero. So now, um, and then here we're, we're only trying to identify where the slope is, um, um, where the slope is zero. So uh, we're only um, setting the numerator of f prime equal to zero. All right. So from here, we're going to. We now found um, candidates for where um, there could be a relative max relative min because wherever the slope is zero, then that could be a potential relative max relative min. Next thing we do is we take these critical points that we found uh, here and we take them and plug them into the second derivative function. Okay, so here's where we need to um, uh, uh, be careful of how to interpret the result. Let's say um, we're plugging in um, a point that ends up being a relative minimum. So if I plug in a, a point that ends up being a relative min into the second derivative, I'm going to get a positive number in return because if you look at um, the portion of the graph that's part of a relative min, this is part of a concave up graph. So if I plug this point, this relative min, into the second derivative function, I I'm, I'm, will get back a positive value. So if I get a positive value um, uh, by plugging that critical point into the second derivative, then that guarantees that I have a relative minimum at this point here.
Okay. Um, if I take uh, a critical point from uh, the first derivative, and I plug it into the second derivative, and if I get a negative value, then that tells me that there is a relative max at that critical point. So for instance, let's say you have a critical point here. Um, this is, let's say we've already, we already know that point is part of a, where slope is zero. And the, but it's also, if you look, this point is also part of a concave down graph. So then that means if this critical point plugged into the second derivative produces a negative value, then I know that there must be a relative max at that point. Um, if the critical point from f prime gives me zero in f double prime, then that tells me that the second derivative test is inconclusive. Um, we are unable to conclude um, whether there's a relative max, relative min, or neither. We would have to um, resort to another test, such as the first derivative test. So the second derivative test um, is probably not going to be as um, used as often as the first derivative test, but sometimes on the AP exam, College Board um, will um, create problems that will um, uh, test students um, their knowledge of the second derivative test.